Okay, so now we're going to, for the next two days, be doing a reteach lesson on surface area and volume. Today's shapes will include prisms and pyramids. So for this, you, if you haven't gotten one from me at school, you will need a sheet of paper, which is a plain white sheet of paper. And so to start for today's over prisms and pyramids, you're gonna fold it hot dog style. So fold your paper hot dog style. And so now this is, it was, it's gonna open upwards. So what you wanna do is cut three flaps, three flaps down because we're gonna have three different shapes. But don't cut, just cut the flaps. Don't cut all the way through. So like if here's the fold, you'll only cut through the fold or cut to the fold, edge to fold. So just like this. And you'll kind of try to do it in thirds if you can. I'm, mine's not going to be perfect. But there. So we should have three flaps. Now, on each of the flaps, we're going to trace one of our shapes. Let's see if I can angle my camera down so y'all can see me tracing the flaps. You're gonna take your take your sheet right here and lay it underneath so you can trace it. So for this first flap, I'm going to first let me see if I can flip my video around. There we go. Okay, that's better. So for the first one, we're going to do the rectangular prism. On the outside of the flap, you just want to trace the prism. So I'm gonna actually kind of fold it out like this, place it down, and then I'm going to try to trace it to the best of my ability. Okay, so there's my rectangular prism. It's not perfect, but there it is. And then you'll repeat the process for a triangular prism on this flap and a cone on this flap. So let me try to do my triangular prism.
Okay, so again, it's not pretty, but there it is. And then the last one over here is going to be a pyramid. Okay, so this is what it should look like on the front. You got your shapes drawn on the front. Now, inside, we're going to write the, like on the top of the flap up here, we're going to write the name of the shape, the formulas. Actually, no, we're going to write the name of the shape and then what we need to find on those prisms. So for the for this one, this is a rectangular prism. So inside the flap, I'm going to write rectangular prism. And then I'm going to put what I need to find. So for a prism, rectangular prism, what do we need to find before we can plug in to our formulas? Well, we need the height of the prism. And we call that H. We need the perimeter of the base. We use a capital P for that one. I can even see what I'm writing. And then we need the area of the base. We use a capital B for that one. And since this is a rectangular prism, this is going to be little b times h. Now this h right here is different for the h for the prism. This H is talking about the height of just your base. Okay. 
Okay, so the inside of your flap should look something like this. Let me flip it around to where you can see it plainly. There we go. So under, we're gonna on top, on front we have a prism, rectangular prism on the inside of the flap. I have the name, and then what the things we need to find. And so that's what this will look like for all of them. Once we get what we need to find, we can flip it back to the front and write our heights and stuff, our lengths of each, each of these. So the base down here, let's say it is seven centimeters. The height's two centimeters. And then this is gonna be eight centimeters. We could do something like this. And then now in the blank space down here, we can actually find H, P, and B. And then we'll do the formulas. So. What I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna share a document, share the screen and do a document. And then we'll continue like with the Word document, but everything I write on the document, I want you to write on your paper. So some of this I'll have to, I'll kind of get done, especially the things I've already done. And then we will keep going. So, okay, so I have everything drawn on the computer, I've got them all traced, and I'm caught up to where we did it by paper. So let's keep going to where you see my dotted line down here. This is like where we folded it, folded the paper. They saw the lines, that's where we're, we cut it. Okay, so for the prism, rectangular prism, we said we needed the perimeter of the base, the area of the base, and the height of the prism. And for the area of the base, big B, that's base times height. But this H is different from the H for the prism. So let's find each of those. Let's find each of those right quick. And then we can plug into our formulas. Okay, so for the perimeter of the base, P. Let's see if we look up on our flap, the bases are rectangles. So this side's understood two, that side's understood seven. Two plus seven plus, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. This is an eight, that two is vertical. This eight is gonna be over here. So we need to make sure we don't make the mistake I just made. This eight is talking about that side. So seven plus eight plus seven plus eight. Seven plus eight. 
plus seven plus eight. It's gonna give us 30 centimeters. Then for the area of the base, B, that's going to be, we said BH. Now for our rectangle, I have to find the area of this rectangle down here. It's gonna be seven times eight. Seven is the base of the rectangle, eight is the height of the rectangle. So seven times eight equals 56 centimeters squared. And then we need the height. So the height, this is the height of the prism, not of the base, of the prism. That's the two, the one we haven't used yet. So two centimeters. Now we can do lateral surface area. So let me pH. So P is 30. H is two. Thirty times two is sixty centimeters squared. There's our lateral area. And we have total surface area. Be pH plus 2B. So 30 times 2 plus 2 times 56. Let's see, that's going to be 112. Give me 172. 172. Centimeter square. And last but not least, we have volume. Area of the base times height. So let's see, area of the base was 56. The height was two. So 56 times two is 112 centimeters cubed. So there's our rectangular prism. Now, what's this next shape? It's a prism, but what, what shape is our base right here? That base now is a triangle. If we look, it's this is a this makes a triangle. So that means this is a triangular. Triang triangular prism. That's one thing you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to be able to look at these and know what shape they are. This was a rectangular prism. This is a triangular prism now. So what do we need to find? Well, we still have the three same three things. First, we've got to find the perimeter of the base. So 
Why should we call that the capital P? Then we've got to find the area of the base. That's our capital B. And then we need the height of the prism. which is our H. Those are the three things we need. So for the area of the base, our formula for it, since it's a triangular prism, it's gonna be one half base times height. Again, this H, This H is different from the H for the prism. For a triangular prism, you still need P, B, and H, but your B is different because it's a triangle, not a rectangle. So let's add some dimensions here. That way we can kind of know what we're dealing with. Let's see, we're gonna say that this side is 15 inches. This is eight inches. This one's gonna be 17 inches. And then let's do six inches here. Okay. So let's see, can we get P? Well, I want to look at my triangle and get the perimeter of the triangle because the triangle, if we outline it, it's our base. This is our base right here. That's what I need the perimeter of. This side down here is also that side. So our for the perimeter, we would do 17 plus 15 plus eight. Seventeen plus fifteen plus eight. It's gonna get us forty. I forgot the units we were in. We're in inches, so forty inches. Then we need the area of the base. We wrote our formula right up above. We said it's gonna be one half base of the triangle times height. So one half, the base of our triangle. Basically, you need the two that make the right angle. So which two make the right angle? 15 and eight. That's the two that make the right angle. 15 and eight. So one half times 15 times eight. going to give us 60 inches squared. And then we need the height of the prism, which would be our six inches, the only one we haven't used yet. Six inches. Okay, we're set. We can find lateral area, total surface area, and volume. So lateral area is the perimeter of the base times the height. So 40 times six. It's 
So you get us 240 inches squared. Then we need total surface area. pH plus 2B. So 40 times 6 plus 2 times 60. So we need 360 inches square. That's our total surface area. And then we need volume. So BH. B was 60, H is 6. So 60 times 6 is 360 inches cubed. There is our info for triangular prisms. And now we have the last one. We have a pyramid. Now in our case, if I label some sides here, that's gonna be six yards. That's going to be six shards. This would be a square pyramid. I didn't draw it on here, but they tell us these are all right angles. It's a square pyramid. So we're going to come down here and write its name. Exactly what we just said. Say square pyramid. So then four square pyramids, what do we need to find? Well, one thing, we need the perimeter of the base. Which we call that capital P. We need the area of the base. We're going to call capital B. We need the height of the pyramid. Which is H. And we need the slant height. which we use a fancy little L for. Now, this is a square pyramid. So our capital B is going to be side squared because you're finding the area of a square. There's our square. All sides are six yards. So now let's add in some other details that may help us. Add in some other measurements. This right here is going to be our slant height. And it's five yards.
Then we have our normal height. Okay, where'd my mouse go? There it is. And this one's going to be four yards. Okay, so let's look at what we need to find pretty much everything. So first, we want to get the perimeter of the base, so P. Well, we did say this is a square. All sides are six. So six plus six plus six plus six. So you give us 24 yards. Then we need the area of the base. We wrote up here our formula for the area of the base. We said it was B equals S squared or side squared. So six squared is 36 square yards. Then we need the height of the pyramid. Look, the height is the one that goes vertically straight up and down. So this four yards would be our height. The five yards is our slant height. So four yards is height. Five yards is the slant height. We have everything that we need to find. So now let's do the surface area and volume. So for lateral area, so we need one half, perimeter of the base times the slant height. So we need one half, P is 24, L is five. This will be 60 yards squared. Then we have total surface area. It's one half PL plus B. So one half times 24 times five plus 36. It's gonna give us a total surface area of 96 square yards. And then we've got volume. Our formula for volume is one third area of the base times height. That's gonna be one third area of the base is 36. The height is four. It's gonna be 48 cubic yards. Okay, so now we've done everything. We found, we've talked about our three shapes. We've got a rectangular prism, triangular prism, and then a square pyramid. Okay, so when you get yours all said and done, it should look like this. So let's say I'm doing the doing our rectangular prism. Well, I guess I'm doing the pyramid, not the prism. Let's say I'm doing the pyramid right here, the square pyramid. Then you can flip it up.
You see what you need to find. And the work that's involved on a rectangular prism. So this is how your completed foldable should look. You should be able to open the flaps and see the different shapes. Now I realize I haven't opened this one, but there's that one. This is our foldable. We can use it to study for the test. Okay, so use this to help you on the assignment. I hope maybe by doing this and having to actively manipulate things, it helps you to better understand presumptions and pyramids. Remember, you were created to do wonderful things and you are awesome. Always believe.